the year a lot. Um, as Peter said, I, I um, have spent a long time looking at the nature of work. I worked for a long time, for those of you who remember it, for the old Commonwealth Employment Service in the days when we actually had a free employment service that anybody could access without it being rorted. Um, I run my own consultancy business. I'm a demographer, a labour market analyst and a futurist. And I also do work for a not-for-profit in Geelong, which is funded by the state government to improve education and employment outcomes. Now, I might be better standing over here where I'm not in everybody's way. Um, I'm going to try and cram about an hour's presentation into 45 minutes. So my intent is to speak so quickly that you can't understand a word I'm saying and you therefore can't question anything I say. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do is to start off by talking to you a little bit about what we're seeing at a global level, what we're seeing at a national level. I want to talk to you about some of the new technologies that are coming into some of the big industries that are important in our region, and some of those will blow your mind. And then I want to talk about what that might mean for the Ballerine Peninsula as we move into new ways of working. So if people want to jump in and ask questions, that's fine, but I'm cautious of not cutting into the time of the next speaker. So let's have a look. We know at the moment that we've got a shortfall of 1.8 billion jobs at a global level for those who want full-time meaningful work. So already a huge problem um, for people who are looking for work. We also know that new technologies and new automation means that by 2030 we expect to lose another 2 billion jobs at a global level. And this means that the whole nature of work itself is changing. So at a global level, these are the predicted growth industries. Now, what you'll see in the brackets is the projected economic growth. You need to take that a little bit cautiously because of these, of all of these, green and sustainable energy is the only one that really has the potential for future employment growth as well. And that's a concern when we had a government or a, a prime minister who thought that wind farms were ugly and coal mines were very beautiful things. So we need to be thinking about our position on renewable energies and not getting too far behind other countries because this industry offers opportunity not just for professional people in the research and development but also in manufacture, in maintenance, in all of those sorts of areas that we're finding we're starting to lose in this area at the moment. Um, you'll see, if I can get this to work, mobile phone applications predicted to grow at 128%. And that sounds fabulous, except mobile phone apps are created by kids sitting in their bedrooms that don't employ people. So there's a real issue with some of these technology-driven industries and what they mean, whether there's a correlation in employment. Okay, so if we look at the national level, um, these are the growth industries that have been identified by Ibis World. This one a bit. Yeah, that would be good. On the right side or the left side? <laughs> that would be good. Um, and we've got a fairly consistent view with what we're looking at across the G21 region here. Health, at one stage, was about the 14th largest employing industry in the country. It now rates top at national, state and regional level. Huge growth potential. But what we're seeing in trying to retrain people is that they're being pushed into the community services, aged care, childcare, disability care, um, low pay, not great career progression, not great conditions. Um, instead of trying to take a longer term view that we're going to look at the para um, uh, medical and the professional medical areas. Uh, wealth management, if I had any wealth, I'd know I could grow that. <laughs> Um, Agribusiness is one I do want to talk to in relation to this area. Okay, so um, last year the Brotherhood of St Lawrence put out a report on youth unemployment and I was interested in the point about concern about employment for our young people in the future and again I want to come back to that. We have this dialogue with our young people about the importance of lifelong learning, going on to post-secondary studies. That's fine. Um, and one, a couple of the charts in this report reinforce that. What they showed was that young people in the 15 to 18 year group are far less likely to get a job than their 19 to 24 year 
compatriots and their overall population. And if they do get a job, they're at much higher risk of losing that job. Mm -hmm. So that sort of reinforces our conversations around lifelong learning. And then I got to this table. And what we see here is that the Brotherhood looked at unemployment statistics from 2005 to 2012.